Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Golf Unfiltered mini series, Memoirs from Magnolia Lane. My name is Nikki Dunnigan, and I'm so glad that you are here. We are once again celebrating the first men's major of the year, clearly my favorite major of the year, um, by bringing you stories and traditions surrounding this sacred tournament from the patron point of view. Um, just a quick little reminder that I always have to throw out there. Um, this podcast is no way affiliated with, nor are we sponsored by Augusta National Golf Club, the Masters Tournament, or any of its affiliates. Um, just throwing that out there as a reminder before I introduce you to today's guest, who I am so, so excited for you to meet. Uh, if you haven't seen him crafting cocktails behind the bar on Bachelor in Paradise, you might have seen him as the host of uh, Best in Dough on Hulu, or maybe you've heard him over on his own podcast called Your Favorite Thing um, with co-host Brandy Cyrus. Or maybe you've even seen him um, out on the course playing the LPGA Tournament of Champions. Um, he is the funny and talented Wells Adams. Thank you so much for being here today. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. That was a really good intro. I've done a lot of these, <laughs> and that might that might have been the best one. So, oh, I thank you. I thank well you. Well done. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I always like to touch on to the fact that you um, you're not just a golf fan, but you you're actually out there playing golf yourself too. Yeah, so I grew up, it's funny because, you know, this is all about Augusta, but I grew up uh, where I, what I consider to be the golf mecca of America, which is not Augusta, Georgia, but <laughs> no. Monterey, Carmel, Pebble Beach area. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like uh, golf's been, uh, I've been, I've been kind of uh, surrounded by golf my entire life. We grew up on um, the oldest golf course west of the Mississippi, Um a golf course called Old Del Monte, which is still mm. there. It's actually owned by the Pebble Beach Company now. Um, and I grew up on the corner of nine and ten. And so, you know, all these for people that don't know, like really old golf courses and link style courses, there is no like we get back to nine or we get back nine ends at the clubhouse, then you kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, old style courses, you went out and then you came back in like Pebble. You know, you go the furthest reaches of the course is is the end of nine and ten, and then you come back. Um, and same with the course I grew up on. So there was no like snack shack. Right, uh, you got a hot dog at turn and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, we would sell golf balls that would land in our yard and sell like lemonade and tang and beer when people wanted it. And then my father would, um, he would bribe the marshal every month with a bottle of wine. So uh, <laughs> he wouldn't give us crap about doing twilight rounds. And we used to have this, uh, this, bench that looked um a bench with binoculars that looked down uh to two or like one one hole and then two tee box and if no one was coming up one or on two we'd jump over to three and play the front and come back and if someone was coming up two we'd look up nine which is a, a great par five and if no one was coming down nine we'd jump on ten and play the back and then and then once we'd get to like 17, jump over to two and then come back around. We had like a whole system. So uh, yeah, I kind of grew up playing a lot of golf, um, a lot of twilight rounds. And uh, that's how I am uh, I'm affiliated. But yeah, what you were saying was like, I, I actually play in tournaments. Yeah, so I, I play in um, the LPGA Tournament Champions, which is at Lake Nona. And it's like, you have to have won a tournament uh, the prior year Mm -hmm. for the lpga players to play so it like really is like their kind of like fedex cup or whatever um and that's really fun and hard uh because like we have to play alongside them for four days uh there is no cut there's money involved for the celebrities and then i also play um in a champions tour event which is the same thing modified stalford where uh, we play at las colinas which is uh which is coming up actually in um in april and that's a really, really fun event, like getting to play alongside the guys that like I watched growing up, like Darren Clark and John Daly and Freddie Couples is like amazing and also like terrifying. So yeah, I've been playing a bunch of those, those pro-ams and um, I've learned a lot about my game and uh, I have a newfound respect for like professional golfers because it's a whole different level of anxiety when there's patrons and cameras and all that. I actually just went to um, Las Colinas for the first time. Um, randomly, my flight got stranded 
um, out of the Dallas airport. And mm -hmm. so I, that was the only hotel that was left. I was like, sure. Yeah. I'll stay at this golf resort. It was great. Um, but I got to kind of walk, walk around the course for a little bit. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. Um, yeah. They used to play, is it Byron Nelson? They used to play there. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. And yeah. I think they moved it to what TPC Craig ranch or something now. Um, yeah. it's not there anymore, but which is weird because the whole place is like a shrine to mm -hmm. Byron Nelson. And so, yeah, but it was, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun course and, um, come hang out with us. It's going to be, uh, coming up in middle of April. So if you're in Dallas, just come out there and, you know, hang, it's, it's a lot of fun. Great course, yeah. beautiful course. Well, and you talked about kind of growing up playing golf and, yeah. um, when you, after you had gone to the masters last year, you had posted on your social media about how growing up playing golf that you always used to like pretend that that last putt falling in was like the putt to win the green jacket. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to ask you the question that we ask all of our guests on the show, which is what makes the masters a, or Anna Augusta, a quote unquote tradition, unlike any other for you. I mean, I think the simple answer is it's the only major that's played the same place every single year. Um, so there is some like familiarity with, uh, the people watching, um, I mean, like, I don't know, like, how lost in the weeds you want to get about, like, the history of golf, but, like, I'm a huge, like, golf historian guy. So, like, yeah, the the Bobby Jones of it all is is very, very cool. Um, you know, he arguably was the greatest golfer to ever play, and he kept his amateur status, which is uh, very, very cool. And, like, during that time, being a professional golfer was was kind of, like, looked down upon so like he would he would like kind of play for um the prestige of the game not for the money which is mm -hmm. very very cool and he, he ended up being a lawyer and um like a politician and, and stuff and like the things that he did for the augusta area is insane but like he like hung it up really really young and i mean we all kind of marvel at the numbers that like tiger and jack did but like bobby jones was was if he was a pro, he would have destroyed all those records. Um, mm -hmm. And it probably wouldn't have been close. Um, so just just that, like this guy who did so much for the game so early on, and then like just played for the love of it, and then created this course because he loved uh, golf so much um, and wanted to like have the best place, uh, the best tournament every year, and have the masters of the game come there, I think is is very, very cool. And then also getting Alistair McKenzie to design it, a guy who, you know, mm -hmm. designed Cypress and, um, oh, what's the place up in Santa Cruz? Uh, anyways, he designed so many amazing golf courses, but like, I don't know, probably uh, arguably one of the best golf course designers other than maybe like <clears throat> old Tom Morris. Um, all that like piled into the history of it all. And then personally for me, like, Obviously, yes, it is the first major of the year. And I just have like memories of like my dad and I just watching the tournament. And mm. it was like a big part of growing up and having the love for the game. And so, yeah, I, I, it's it's a, like a lot of different things. I mean, like easily for me, uh, it's it's like the it's remembering watching it with my father. Like that's. Mm -hmm. And then true, like, yeah, like when I would go out, because I would go, when I would go play Old Del Monte, as Twilight was like coming down, I, I would always be like, this is for, this putt's for to win the Masters, you know, yeah. or uh, to win the US Open at Pebble. Like, those are the yeah. two, those are the two that I consider. And then like, I guess the Open at uh, St. Andrews. Yeah, at the old course. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yes, but I had never been i didn't know if i was ever going to get get to go to the masters like it's so hard to get tickets and like it's kind of just you know every year we put in for the lottery just like hoping you know yeah um and then getting to go like was a really really weird experience it was we went and it was raining that first day and i was like me and my wife were like we're going down to uh amen corner and we go down and I just start crying. And my, <laughs> my wife's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, 
Look, at I don't think one. you're alone in that. You're probably you're yeah. definitely not the first person to have cried over there. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, like. And also, it's amazing. Like we can get into like all the min minutia of it all, but like the it's so well run. Like so. Mm -hmm. Sarah and I go to Disneyland a lot. She's a Disney adult, which she's kind of turned me into a Disney adult. And I'm, I always marvel at like the logistics of how well oiled the machine of Disneyland is or Disney yeah. world. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. And then I, I did learn that like one of the really high up guys at Disney, uh, was a member at Augusta and they mm -hmm. brought him in and they were like, okay, how do we streamline all of this stuff to be like Disney? And I remember like, like even the bathrooms, the bathroom lines, like the, the, the you know, the concessions, it's very Disney. Like it, that, that it, go away green. Yeah. Color go away, that Disney yeah. Has. Like, yeah. That's very similar to the like Augusta green that they yeah. use around their like trash cans and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, very similar. And I, I just was in awe of how, how that many people could come to that piece of property and be able to seamlessly like walk around and do everything. Um, it was, it's like, it's like a engineering Marvel to me when that was like mm -hmm. one of the things I didn't think about that being a thing that I would think about when I got there, I was like, look at this place. Like, this is so amazing that it's a, that it's able to do this every year. Uh, and then also like, I think the golf course is amazing, like beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, we've all heard the stuff of, you know, they, they, they dye the lakes black and like they, they paint the, the grass green. Like they, you know, like, yes, of course they make it look, they, they pipe in the bird chirping noises on the telecast, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it is like a, immaculate, like a beautiful, beautiful piece of property. But um, think about too, did you yeah. see a single squirrel while you were there? I don't, of all those trees, did you see a single critter like <laughs> at no. all i don't think i mean i don't know if i wasn't looking but yeah do, are they are they shooting squirrels out of the trees well i don't know that but like i you don't see them there like yeah. i mean you see squirrels on other courses but like you don't see them there and yeah. like i mean they even have like that detail down to like the 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 t like it's 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 unreal i mean you, you think about too the like the massive amount of people that are even just applying to the lottery and compare that to the, the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster fiasco. Like, yeah. how is the Masters figuring that out every year? And then Ticketmaster just isn't, you know, I that's that's that was my biggest complaint when I was trying to get Eras Tour tickets was like, can the Masters run the like yeah. <laughs> the Eras Tour situation, please? Um, even when it comes to the media situation, you know, I know a lot of times ev almost every PGA Tour tournament it's people complain and say, why haven't they figured this out in the way that the masters does their coverage too? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the, the top of the top. That's for sure. Um, having gone and grown up and gone to pebble so often, which is an iconic course in and of itself. Um, and also a bucket list course for so many other people. Um, yeah. having like was, what were your expectations kind of coming into Augusta? Like you, you, you kind of live on Pebble and that's already like uh, such a bucket list brand name, recognizable place and somewhere that so many other people are like, Oh, I really wish I could make it to Pebble one day. Yeah. And you know, what was your expectation coming into Augusta compared to, you know, that? Yeah, this might be blasphemy, but it's also coming from, a biased opinion um pebble is a more beautiful course than augusta is uh, that's fair that's a fair fair opinion it's just it the coastline like you can't beat it like i and i played cypress too which is arguably mm -hmm. the you know i think that there's two private courses in this country and it's augusta and it's cypress um mm -hmm. and then it's everything else i think augusta is better than cypress uh Cypress has like basically four amazing holes, uh, like right on the water. But I think Pebble is the better course. Just like you're, you know, you have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
17, 18, where the time, all the, the, the whole time you're walking it, you're like, holy shit, like, mm -hmm. look at this, the surf and like, it's all in the water. It's beautiful. Um, but that's such a, like, that the piece of property is, was, it just, that's the golf course is the piece of property. Like they mm -hmm. didn't really change a whole lot. Whereas uh, Augusta, what makes it amazing is one, like you, you hear the whole thing of like, it's a lot healer than you think it is. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like I play Sherwood and uh, like Bel Air, like courses that are kind of up and down and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then you, I got there and I was like, the elevation changes are insane. Mm -hmm. um, here's the things that like the, I would say uh, really blew me away about Augusta. The fairways were insanely wide. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I don't know how you miss a fairway here. Like <laughs> it, it's that's so wide. Um, but obviously, like <clears throat> Alistair McKenzie was like a genius at like <clears throat> um fairways would run out and mm -hmm. like you you're, you you would be in the fairway and then you're not then you're off or whatever. And like the lines you have to take to be able to attack are obviously much harder. Uh to stay in the fairway and stuff. But I remember thinking like I could be snap hooking the ball all over this yard and I would still be in it. Mm -hmm. But it's defense is the greens are insane. Like they are all turtle backs. Uh, like I, the, the fact that they're, is, the, it, yeah. yeah, the fact that you're able to have a ball stay on the green is bonkers to me. And that's something that you really can't see on TV. Uh, and it's all false fronts, all false backs. Like it's, Every lie is a tight lie. Uh, and so, yeah, like you, it's a, like I understand why like they had to tiger proof it because tiger came in there and like the fairways are just so big. Like if, if you let that guy or even it, now any kind of like player of today who's hitting the ball, you know, 340, all of a sudden you have like these really short shots in t and you need that for this course because you have to be hitting, you know, wedges into these greens to be able to hold these greens. So yeah, I, I remember being like kind of blown away by the fairway size, but then the greens like really, really blew me away. Um, and it was also really cool to see how golfers played that. Like we sat my, my, um, my plan was is that I wanted to go sit on 12 T box at Amen Corner and I wanted to watch everyone came, come in on 11. And then I wanted to watch everyone shot on 12. And uh, I, I don't know if I saw a single birdie on 11. Those guys were like, I'm not even going for this green. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm dumping it out right. I'm not messing with that water on the left. And I'm like, Texas wedging. Oh, my my third shot up to the green, getting a par and getting the hell out of there. And then same with 12, like everyone was missing left uh, for that pin position. And it was, it was like, I'm not going for birdie here. I'm just trying to get my par and get the hell out of here, which was, was like us amateurs don't play golf that way. Like we play, like I'm going to go for the green. Right, I'm going to yeah. aim for the, the, the pin. Mm -hmm. Uh, but these guys were like, I don't even fucking with the green. I am gonna dump it out here and get up and down and get on. And I'm gonna I'm gonna par the, you know, the part. I'm gonna birdie the par fives. And uh, so yeah, it was it was interesting to see like the gameplay that those guys have for that course. Uh, and it, that's why it was. It's like even you can not never miss a fairway and still be like, I'm not gonna try to go for this green. You know, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's um one of my favorite spots to sit is right next to that on, um, on 13 Yeah, and watch them approach from 12 and then yeah, yeah, yeah. up um, on that hill. Yeah. Like T box of 13. Um, well, yeah, we'll sit there, but then also sometimes we'll go down to the actually, actually the green of 13 oh, okay. and actually watch like kind of in between, like almost fairway of 13 and then green of 13. Um, because you can actually see like they're them, finish in the fairway of 13 finish on the green. And then you can also see the T box of 14 as well. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that is also happening on 13, depending on where that pin is, because you've got that little stream right in front of the green. Mm -hmm. And, um, depending on where the flag is, there's, there's not a lot of people going for it. 
Um, they don't want to go in that water or they don't want to go behind into those bunkers. And it's um, very rarely do you have a lot of big, um, a lot of excitement over there. Yeah. But it's fun to see the strategy and like, yeah. why are they doing what they're doing? Um, but it's also a good spot because right behind you in the, like right behind those grandstands is 15 and to the right of you is 16. Mm -hmm. So those are places where people are taking like their risks. Yeah. And so you can hear some, some roars and because you're close enough, you can kind of move over that direction pretty, pretty easily. So that's a, a nice little spot to kind of convene right there for sure. Yeah. I liked going to 18 and T like 18 T cause it's like that, it, that shoot of like, mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, I want to go and look. I, we walked the entire course, but I was like, I want to go look and watch people hit balls on 18 because uh, you see it on TV and you're like, I don't know how anybody gets us through this thing, you know? Um, right, and isn't hitting someone over to the right. Yeah, or, yeah. or just hitting the trees. Like, yeah. it's so narrow. And what was what, what blew my mind was I, I went to the T and I was like, wow, this it is it is so narrow. Like, I don't know what I would do here because I hit a big draw. So I'd be like way on the left side of the T box and like just trying to peel it. But what what's like such an Allison McKenzie thing is like, yes, it's so penal where you tee off, but then you get out to the fairway and it is so wide open. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can't see. You can't see that like you have so much room, uh, both left and right there, when you get through that shoot, um, which I thought was, uh, I was like, wow, yeah, it's, a, it's such a mind F uh, sitting on that tee box. Um, and I don't know like if how much history of Alistair McKenzie you know about, um, but he was a... Uh, he was in the he was a, a British soldier and his whole his main thing was camouflage. Uh he was like an expert in camouflage. And so he brought that into a lot of his uh course design is he wanted to camouflage things um for people. Like the famous one at Cyprus is um like I think it's on like oh, maybe two. Uh when you're walking to the par five, a big dog leg left, uh, when you're walking up it, there's tons of bunkers uh, all around the green. And um, and when you get to three tee box, you look back, it you can't see a single bunker. Uh, and it's the way he like camouflages it. Um, and mm -hmm. it's a, it's a optical illusion. And it's so cool. And, and you can see it a lot in uh, like holes on augusta where you're like oh he was high he's hiding things like mm -hmm. like 18's, on 18 you can't it's a great them. example of yeah. that yeah uh which is such a cool like weird idiosyncrasy of uh of golf course design that like people don't think about but i like nerd out on yeah well and that's that's something too that it's it's that kind of thing is another thing that's very hard to to see unless you're there because even on tv sometimes like just you can tell it's a hill that they're walking up on 18 yeah. but until you're there actually walking up that hill yourself you're like you don't you don't really see how daunting that hill is and people can tell you all day long but until you've had to like walk up it or have someone stand behind you and push you up it because yeah. <laughs> you're running out of energy um yeah it's a uh, it, it's tough for sure um yeah, I um I'm curious um of of all of the the holes on the course, which one you know, you you talked about some of the like the greens and the, the turtleback greens and some of the false fronts and um of all of the holes on the course, which one having seen it on TV versus having seen it in person was the one like had the most difference for you? I think I would I was the most shocked about 11. I and I don't know I, I think it's cuz I was like I haven't seen a single no one's made a birdie here. I, that blew my mind. Uh And it doesn't seem like it should be a really hard hole. Uh but it's just so it's the brown the green is just so shaved that everything's tight. Uh that really that really kind of blew my mind. I do love 
16 is a par three, right? With, mm -hmm. uh, Over the water, yeah. yeah. I, I love that hole because uh, it so much can happen there. Like, you know, when, when you're coming down, the, I, I love the idea of like, there's a lot of uh, calamity that can happen at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, so the players was, you know, obviously 17 of the players is that hole, you know, right. and the same thing with 16, like either you, you birdie it and that's huge or like, you put it in the water right, and you pull you know. what Wyndham Clark did on yeah. Saturday. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like that. Um, I really like one, like, I, I don't know why, uh, it's a fun hole for me. Like it's a big downhill. It's so much more downhill of a shot than like mm -hmm. you think it is. Um, and then a big uphill shot. And I, I, I imagine the anxiety that's got to be like maybe maybe except for the Ryder Cup, that's got to be the most like anxiety ridden golf shot that like anybody hits all year. Just because um, it's just that big open fairway and it's yeah. downhill and yeah. And that crowd is huge there on yeah. one, you know, yeah. like you know at like at Genesis, you have a similar thing, but there's not you can't fit as many people there at Riviera on one tee box, you know, so it's just not as it's it's not as uh a scary that's why i would say like the Ryder cup is that one because it's so many people there in that bowl mm -hmm. and that was i remember thinking that i was like there's so many people here watching one tee box um i and i just thought that that was you could like feel the tension for everybody you know yeah yeah i don't know the whole thing is freaking beautiful i i, I uh i'm trying to think of like the other holes that i really really loved we what we did was so on Saturday, like I said, we went to Amen Corner, and uh, it, Saturday was the day that it rained, and we sat there with ponchos on and got absolutely hammered and <laughs> drank so much. Um, and it was funny because then the next day was like a bluebird, beautiful day, and we were walking around with. You know, we were just, I was like, let's just walk the course and check it out. And, uh, you know, after like Sarah and I do this thing, like when we go to dinner, it's like, all right, the best thing, the worst thing, like what, what, whatever, you know, like, uh, what would you order again? And, mm -hmm. and we do that with trips too. And I was like, all right, well, you know, like what was your favorite part? And we both said, sitting in the rain on 12 T box drunk was <laughs> so much more fun than like the beautiful day. Cause I, everyone was around. like, yeah, and, and all like the the locals that you meet there are always like, oh, you know, you're I'm so sorry the weather's bad today. And 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 like if that was your the only day you got to go, that kind of sucks. Like I, I feel bad. Like I understand what they're saying. But I was like, no, hell no. This this was the most fun we had. Like yeah. the weather was bad, so the course was playing tough, but then also softer. Like uh and you know, we we, we won't we weren't cold. We sat there with ponchos. We got absolutely hammered. They stopped play for a while, and we were like, you know, no one has a phone. So you're like, what do what what do we do? Where do we mm -hmm. go? And, you know, we just like hung out by ourselves on twelve. Anyway, that was more fun than than the Sunday, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I it, it it's one of those. Uh, so we, uh, there's only a few places that like I've like really uh, uh, felt like the ghosts of like uh the golf of ghosts. golf past cyprus is one of those places like the the um the locker room when you walk in you're like whoa this is this is crazy um and that and at augusta you could it's feel you feel like it's got a weird aura to mm -hmm. it which is like really really cool um and you might just it, that might just me wanting that to be the case but the history of that place is just so cool that like it's got to be real. That's that's ironic that you say that because I uh, on another episode um, last season I I shared the story, but my one of when I would used to ask my grandfather um, who got to go for many many years, um, you know one of his favorite memories from going and um, he now granted he saw all of all of Jack's wins. He saw all of Tiger's wins. And like, you would wow. think that would be one of them, you know, um, his, the story he would always tell was of the time that he took my grandmother for the first time. And it was a pop-up 
rainstorm and they didn't have any umbrellas. They didn't have any ponchos and they went running underneath the scoreboard and like huddled together under the rain. And that was like, that's his favorite memory of his entire history of being at Augusta was like this, like huddling together under the rain. And, you know, um, just because the place itself made that memory for him. And yeah. so it wasn't all of the the victories. It wasn't all of the like, you know, the the magical moments or the the fist pumping from Tiger or anything like that. It was just the the place and the history, you know. Yeah. So which I thought was, you know, incredible and and speaks to to your story too. The fact that like just being there, the fact that you're on the course and and in the place and you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the other thing that I, I wish, obviously like m my experience is a little more unique than most people because like pe people n know who I am. They see me on TV and they especially know who my wife is. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the, th the things that I think is the coolest thing and I wish more events did this was taking your phone away. Yep. Uh, we were still, greeted by people and people were like oh my god it, like you're the girl from honor family oh my god you're the guy from you know bachelor in paradise um but the second you take someone's phone away they have to actually have a conversation with you yep and it was so lovely when we like go get a sandwich and a beer and be sitting there and someone would come up and you just have like, like meaningful conversations with people instead of like the thing of like sometimes you feel like a little bit of a commodity to people. They're like, hey, can we get, can we get a picture? Okay, can we get another picture. Okay, and then they they leave, and you're like, well, I kind of feel used, you know. Whereas uh, at that place, you can't have your phone, and like it was really lovely to like have conversations with people, and like you know, th there are these people who get, have like tickets for life, and they have all these crazy stories, like you're. Uh, grandfather and it was just so nice to actually sit there and like listen to all these like old tales of Augusta mm -hmm. and that was one of our favorite things in the world um and it's also nice to like uh take that you know that addiction away from you uh and it's also really fun because then you hear roars Mm -hmm. And then, then it becomes like a word of mouth thing. Like, wait, what, what happened? Like, oh, Rory made, Rory went in the water. And you're like, oh, we got to run down there, you know? You're doing it, math with the, like, the, the tea times and yeah. going, okay, well, he teed off at this time, so he should be at this hole, in the, but the roar was over there, so it's actually, yeah. wait, hold on, let's see if, who's which person it actually is. And then you're watching the scoreboard to see which name flips mm -hmm. and who it actually is. And, yeah, I remember the year that um, Jordan uh, – Jordan Spieth blew it um, yeah. for his second win. Uh, we were sitting over on, I think we were actually sitting on, we might've been sitting on 13 that year, but there's a, a big scoreboard right behind you on that 13th green. And um, we heard this massive just groan and we were like, oh no, what's happening? Yeah. And then we saw the numbers flip for Jordan and we, we just knew that he had gone in the water. Like there's, yeah. we had no context. We, we didn't see it on our phones. We just, but there's no other way that his numbers would have dropped that bad if he hadn't gone in the water. And then we had to wait till later to see that that's what actually happened. But, you know, the same thing with when Tiger used to play, you know, you could tell the difference between like a roar because somebody just made an eagle or a birdie and then a roar because Tiger just did anything, you know, and it was, yeah. you could tell the difference. Um, and that, that is so cool to me. And like you said, I wish, more places did that and it's cool to also see pictures and even on watching on tv like when players are on the tee box people are actually just standing behind them and watching them yeah versus like all the phones up you know videoing them which i i get you know i'm i've done it too at a tournament you know oh, let me get this picture of this person here because when am i going to see them again but like it's also nice to see you know, everyone just enjoying the moment, you know, I think that's, that's nice, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah, I also like, and, and this is maybe a little bit of like the stuffy old, like country club kid in me. <laughs> uh, but I like that there's no baba buoys and like mashed potatoes mm -hmm. that, that, that drives me insane. Uh, and anyone who does that, I hate you so much. Like, 
like I why why do you think anyone wants to hear that? Like you're that annoying kid in school that like won't shut up. Like remember there was that one year they they did not let people in who were wearing the the Bud Light Dilly Dilly t-shirts. Like, really? They were not gonna if they saw you in a shirt that said Dilly Dilly, they were kicking you out. So Yeah. I we saw I saw someone get kicked out on I think that Saturday who screamed something. And I was like, I, I didn't even know that there was like this rule of that. And uh, he think he screamed something at Tiger or about Tiger or whatever. And they kicked him out. Or maybe they had a, like a stern talking to, I'm not really sure. But I love that like no one was yelling out stupid stuff. I, I don't know why that bugs me so much. But like mashed potatoes or Bubba Booey's like, what do you, do you think that like, are you going to go watch the telecast back and be like, that was me. I was the one who said yeah, that. Did you hear me? Did you hear yeah. me? Guys? That was me. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just so dumb. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, love, I love like, that they're like, you can't do that there. Like, we'll kick yeah. you out if you do that. I'm like, yes, more like the waste management. You can do yeah. it there. But mm -hmm. everywhere else has some respect. This is golf. It's different than like a football game. Yeah. And there's we've also seen people like um, we've been walking into the gate before and seen people that they've been making like take off their like head to toe tiger onesies yeah. um, because that's like you said, waste management, Ryder cup, maybe even like the players, like those kind of thing. Like it's, it's fine there. Um, yeah. But like Augusta is a different environment. I think um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like you on that. You know, I, the Masters was my first ever golf tournament. And so, oh, really? I, yeah. Jeez. And so when I, went to another it's golf all, tournament and I saw downhill people, from here. So I know, I know. <laughs> when I went to another golf tournament, I saw people in like jeans. I was like, what is yeah. going on? Like, what, what are you doing? You know? And I heard people like yelling things on the T or just like had their phones out. I'm like, what? Like I left my phone in the car going to another golf tournament. Cause I just thought that that's what you did. Yeah. And so, but I think I, not saying that every golf tournament should be that way. I think that there's a place for fun. I think there's a place for, I think the waste management got a little out of control this year, but yeah. Um, I think I think you're right though. Like Augusta, you know, let it let it be what it what it is, you know, like and respect it for what it is. Like you said, there there's history there, you know, and or not if not the 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 golf ghosts are are gonna judge you. you. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna judge you. Yeah, for sure. You well, did mention too sitting on sitting over there and, and drinking all day. Yeah. too um i wanted to ask your opinion have it having it been your first time there how was the the concession aspects you know that's one of the biggest things that people talk about yeah well, i kind of touched on it earlier about like th the the smoothness of which everything runs like i was always amazed like i was like damn the line's long and we got through it so fast mm -hmm. um and like all obviously with the advent of like just you just like touch your credit card to things and it does mm -hmm. it like makes it so easy. But uh yeah, I think I loved it. I thought it was I wish that more tournaments could do that. Uh but obviously tournaments want to make money. And that's the I think that's the great thing about Augusta is it's a, it's a private club, so they can say, like, F you, this is how we're doing it. And we don't right. really keep like there is no you don't get to tell us how to run our tournament and we're not going to charge seventeen dollars yeah. for a hamburger, like no. Yeah, and like also there, are, you know, whatever two dollar pimento cheese sandwiches, um, or and the, there's like a barbecue one, and but also like they, it is a two dollar sandwich. Like it isn't mm -hmm. like it isn't the best sandwich you've ever had in your right. entire it's, life. Two dollar sandwich, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like it should be two dollars. Uh -huh. um, I wholeheartedly stand by that. Like it's, right. it's priced correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the the the. There's really, I think there's only like two options of beer and like a couple options of wine. That's really it. Like I, I was like, oh, you guys, I want a seltzer. You know, like I want like a white mm -hmm. claw. I was like, no, 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 I'm drinking beer. They just but, recently, like in the past two years, started adding the wine option. Yeah. Like the white wine option. Like it I think that's smart, especially for the, the ladies that go out there. Because uh, let, let's be fair, like a, a lot of women don't want to drink beer, uh, which I totally understand. I don't either kind of all day long. But like the white wine for my wife was mwah, chef's kiss. Like it made she a lot loves going to golf tournaments. I've I have fooled her into into, into loving this thing. <laughs> uh, but like I think you you do need to have like a little bit of 
yeah, white wine for the ladies who are like, I'm with my husband. I'm sick of, you know, we're walking around. Mm -hmm. We walked seven miles today. Uh, But yeah, the concessions are bonkers. And I, I, I had more opinions about like the food, but now I forget. Like I had the pimento cheese sandwich. Uh, I, I think I liked the um, the chicken salad the best, um, the chicken salad sandwich. And then the the barbecue sandwich was, was pretty good too, as I yeah. recall. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not a pimento guy. I went to school in the South. I went to school at Ole Miss. And I remember there was always pimento cheese sandwiches in the Grove at Ole Miss. And I hated them. And so nothing's changed for me. If you don't like pimento cheese, you are yeah. definitely not. I've said this before. You're definitely not going to like Augustus because they they put they put it on there. Like there's they don't like shorten it at all. There's a lot. On yeah. That. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. It's not it's not it's not bad. Uh, but I definitely I think that once we we tried everything. And then I think at the end, Sarah was like barbecue chicken and I was um, chicken salad sandwich. That's where we like, we were like, these are ours. This is what we like here. Did they still have the ice cream sandwiches? Yes. By the time y'all were there. Okay. Yeah. yeah Sometimes yeah. by the weekend, they are not gone. And, and that was funny. I think on Saturday, they didn't have it. Um, and we were being told about this ice cream sandwich and we're like, okay. And then on Sunday they, we had it and we were like, oh yeah, this is, this is great. Yeah. Um, and also what I like about the concessions is like, they have all these like little kind of like tabletops afterwards to go and sit and, and you have to become social with everybody. Cause you, you can't like, unless you have a big group, like you have to be like, Hey, can we also eat here? Mm-hmm. And so then it becomes very communal and you're like. Where are you going? Oh yeah, okay, that's a good idea. I'm gonna go. Over, you know, we're gonna go over here. What do you think about that? And then all of a sudden, you're like having this like game plan with people that you never met. And some like I remember there were times when someone was like, "We're gonna go do this," and we we're like, "That's a good idea." Like, can we roll with you? And they're like, "Hell yeah, let's go!" And you like make new friends. And yeah, it's a it's a cool. The no phones thing is it makes it like I realize that like it's tough because you can't get in contact with anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever. But I, I feel like, at, at least for the majors, I think you should take your phones away. Like I, I f- wholeheartedly think that that would make the experience for everyone a, a lot better. I remember the U.S. Open in 2000. Like being able to bring your phone into a golf tournament is a relatively new thing because phones were loud and obviously that would mess up people's swing. And I remember that when the 2000 U.S. Open was at Pebble, I remember we it was still in the era of flip phones, but mm-hmm. we couldn't bring them in. I remember that distinctly. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. I, th- I think I snuck one in and that was, it was a risk because if they, if they found it, they would just take it from you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think, I, I think we should go back to that. Yeah. I think I, I mean, I love it too. I mean, like you said, it's, it's hard. Like if you're meeting someone there, it's like, you just kind of have to say, you know, all right, let's synchronize our watches and yeah. But it's also know. not though that happened to us. Like uh, the the Joe Bros were there, and so we were like, okay. Actually, uh, Nick had a. If I ever went back, I would I would do this. Nick had his um had his Apple Watch, but that has like uh, the cellular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, when we ran into him, he's like, "Do you have your Apple Watch? I I, I can just message you from here." And I was like, "No, I, shit, that's a good idea." But it wasn't a tough thing. It would be like, hey, at noon in front of the scoreboard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Our- and if you're not here, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll try to find you later, I guess. You know, yep. like it yeah, wasn't a said, hard like, thing. Said to- time increments. Like our, our yeah. spot's the big tree in front of the clubhouse. Like, yeah. Cause everybody knows like where that is, you know? And yeah, that's a, yeah. And also, I mean, yeah, there are ways to do it. Clearly they did it before cell phones happened. Yeah. So, I mean, how does it, yeah. yeah, I'm old enough. Like, I didn't get a cell phone until I was, like, a senior in high school. Like, th- yeah, we used to figure out a way to, like, meet up with people. <laughs> you right. You know, like, anyways. Uh, yeah, now we're going into, like, a weird anti-cell phone ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, I know we we got to let you go here soon. But before we do, um, I, I do want to do a quick, like, rapid fire. Um, in honor of your own podcast, Your Favorite Things. Yeah. So I want to do your favorite things from the masters, um, which you kind of just touched on one, the, the pimento cheese, 
or um, the what you said the the egg salad or chicken salad, the chicken yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Um. So, uh, well, okay. So, do a favorite meat sandwich: the chicken or the barbecue? Um. Yeah, I'll go with barbecue. Yeah. So you're you're right. So there was an egg salad, and then it's like a chicken. There's also is there also like a like a club sandwich? There I'm is. Just trying yeah, to there's remember like a club sandwich. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. A turkey, I think. And then there's a. I know there's a ham and cheese on rye because that's that's my go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there is a barbecue one, right? Yes, like, yeah, there yeah, is a yeah, barbecue yeah. one. Yeah, because you can okay. get that one in the the Taste of the Masters kit that you can like order to your house. They, okay. they send the um, pimento cheese, the egg salad, and and the barbecue. Okay, sorry. When I was saying the chicken salad, I meant the egg salad. That was my favorite. Um, but for the meat one, I'm gonna say the barbecue, barbecue. the barbecue sandwich. Yeah. Um, favorite. I mean, we kind of touched on this briefly, but favorite hole at Augusta. Um, sixteen, I think. Sixteen. Yeah. Um, a favorite, well, or biggest might be a better word to say it. Uh, heartbreak you've ever seen at Augusta? Uh, <clears throat> well, from the one that I went to, from I can, I'll answer for my wife. <clears throat> Last year, um, Sarah's favorite golfer is Rory McIlroy, and he missed the cut. And oh, she no. was heartbroken because she so desperately wanted to watch him. And we were, we only had Saturday, Sunday, so she didn't get to see him. And she oh, was no. like, no. Uh, she was like legit not happy about that whole thing. Um, there's been a lot. I try not to like think of like, it's so sad it is, yeah. When like the, the the breakdowns that you watch, and you're just like, oh man, that, that sucks. Uh, I like Spieth, and I didn't like that year that he kind of shit the bed. Mm -hmm. What hole is it? Twelve, where Jack was always like, you just go for the center of the green. Uh, that par three, is it twelve? Mm. There's a bunker in the front. It's over water. 12 uh, is over water. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's that. Anyways, um, cut all that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't try to remember like the breakdowns. It, that makes me sad. And also gives me like such like anxiety when you see it happening. You're like, yep. oh no. Yeah, I know. You're shitting I know. it bad. Like, uh, oh God, the, the PGA that JT like came back and won. Uh, Oh yeah, Mito. Mito just mm -hmm. like just hit seven iron, seven iron. And then putter, for JT putter. on that episode of Full Swing to I know. thank him to like toast him. That was kind of ballsy, actually, but <laughs> yeah, he went yeah. to live though, so I'm sure he's like, screw you, dude. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, favorite um non-2019 Tiger winner that you've been alive to see. I gotta say the non like because everybody's going to say that 2019. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know like, if I would say that one. Um, can I can I cheat and look at some? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, cheat. You can cheat. Master. Because I mean, there, um, there's so many. Like, well, the one that Jack won when he was like what 46 or 49 or something. Like, obviously, I don't even know if I was around for that. But like, the one I in know... um, 86. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I was two then. <clears throat> um, okay, let me go through this. No, 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 no. I just want to list. Ah! List of Masters winners. I think the the Tiger one's obviously an easy one to go to because it just... Well, I, the 97 Tiger one was cool. Uh, I very much was like watching... Uh, I, I remember that one w w with like... <clears throat> I don't know. I assume it was Jim Nance where he's like at five thirty five on a on a on a Friday afternoon, Tiger Woods has the lead of the Masters. Like mm -hmm. it it was like a very iconic thing. And then and he that was the year that like he shot a forty on the front nine on Thursday. And you're like, Yeah, uh, he like, won by like he won by like twelve twelve strokes, I think. Then, yeah. Yeah, then absolutely blew everyone away. And and that's mm -hmm. the thing. Like I also remember the same thing of um the U.S. Open at, at Pebble, I guess that was 99. 
I want to say. Where that he just the blew the he had a broken leg. He blew the field away. No, 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 no. no it no, was no, the no, one, it, it was the one where he he was like 14 under and like no yep. one was no one else was under. Uh it's like the, I remember that very, very vividly. But I want to look at this list. Um oh, I loved Okay, I so this one's a weird one. I love the Dustin Johnson going super low during that COVID year, like no one was there. No one was there, but his score uh, was ridiculous. Like, yeah, he like he broke the score. Then they also played it in November. I remember it was like at a different time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I that one was just unique. Um, I want to see. Yeah, Freddie Couples in '92 was a good one. Mm. Phil breaking through in 2004. Yep. Uh, that was the year. And, that was his jump year, I think, that is now his logo. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he got two inches off the ground. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I hate that, like, a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys went to live. So I'm like, oh, screw you. But uh, I know. Not that it really matters. But I was a huge Bubba Watson fan. Like, still am. Like, the way that he shaped the ball and, like, I was uh, I was in that pine straw and had to really move for that shot out of the pine straw and I will never forget that's probably one of my one of my top ones like that was yeah. insane I I that shot was unbelievable yeah I that he even made it out of that like it was incredible that's up yeah. there for sure yeah Bubba I love I love Bubba Watson uh, although his champions dinner was terrible what did he have. He had a Caesar salad and grilled chicken and confetti cake. That was it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just saw um, John Rahm's menu, which looks pretty fire. Uh, we could, uh, and so you know who who um, who's doing that dinner, right? Is Jose Andreas? Mm -mm, I didn't. So I don't know if you know who Jose Andreas is. He's this like amazing chef, but he also does like crazy philanthropic work with like feeding people who are like, like after the Turkey uh, earthquake, he went and spent like five million dollars just feeding everyone there. Uh, he's go look in you know, Jose Andreas, and and so he's always like Sergio or John Rom's caddy during the par three. Mm. Anyways, he did the the menu for John Rom's. I'm interested to see. Uh, how it is because I think Hideki's is going to go down as the best meal that they've ever had there, yep. which yep. makes total sense. But I was I was seeing the I was watching the four play guys on um, on TikTok and they were talking about that they didn't know that you have to pay for that. The winner has to pay for that. Yeah, meal. which makes sense now. <laughs> I think I said this the other day, but it makes a little more sense now why. John Rom's menu is what it is because he's got like a little bit of that live money. Yeah, kind of exactly. Helping to support it, you know, like that's uh, and maybe why like Scotty's menu was what it was last year, considering he's he's more on the frugal side. Like he's still driving his what is it, 2012 GMC Yukon or something. Like, not that his menu was bad, it just was not. He just seems like a meat and potatoes guy, anyways. Yeah. Um, but it's not it's not the menu that gets you. And I think that people are get forget that it's the you can order whatever you want. So it is like the 1983 Rothschild or like the you know, the really old bottle of silver oak that's like four thousand dollars that like Phil is doing. Phil is doing that every time because he's like, screw you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's okay. all really bougie but yeah. they were talking about they were like how do you bill for that and i was thinking about it when you win you become an honorary member which means they obviously have to set you up for dues and you know billing and everything because you're going to be bringing people on and all that kind of stuff and i'm sure it's just on your bill it's just an invoice for your dues membership yeah um, it's not like they're at the end of the dinner they're like sending you a check and you have to put your like you know your amex down or something like that that's not how that's working no. like i i'm a member at a nice club here and what happens when you join a lot of like re really nice clubs is you sign a thing that 
makes it so you never ever get presented a check. Like it's always this percentage of tip. Mm -hmm. Like you never sign anything. You just up and leave. I guarantee you it's like that at Augusta. Yeah. I guarantee you you eat like at the hotel bar. It's like you send it to your room. Like you don't get sent the, yeah, yeah, no, there's, but like you said, there's going to be people there who are like, Oh, I can order the most expensive, like drink on the menu because I can. Yes, please. But but also those people are also members. So yeah, they not- would have also had to pay for a dinner at one point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that is why Bubba did like, we're just doing grilled chicken and a yeah. Caesar salad. Cause I know you guys are going to rack up the bill on the alcohol. Like who knows? Yeah, for sure. It's such an, it's such a, the champions dinner is such an interesting thing. And I, I wish that we could be in there and hear the stories. And I love that like people have seating arrangements, like, like Trevor Irmelman always sits next to Adam Scott, like no matter what. And I, I love that. Like you sit, I'm sitting next to you, buddy. Uh, I think that's, that's so cool. And what a, what a joy to, to get to be in that little club. Yep. And the year that they left like an open seat for, for Tiger when he couldn't yeah. make it after his wreck, like I'm not gonna, that made me tear up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, and I, I do hope that you are able to get back out to Augusta again very, very soon. Um, where, um, what's, what's coming up next for you? You said the, the champions, um, tour tournament is in end of April. Yeah. Let me I got it right here. Um, it's middle of April. Um, it's called the invited celebrity classic. Um, it's in Dallas at Las Colinas. So that's yeah. Middle of April. I think like it starts maybe like the 18th or the 19th. Uh, and then I'm also doing, if you're up in Maine, I'm going to be doing a tournament called drive for kids. It's basically the same celebrities that are going to be doing the invited celebrity classic are doing the drive for kids. And that's June 20th to the 23rd at uh, Falmouth country club in Maine. And both of these things are like benefiting like amazing hospitals and stuff. And so it's all going to a really good cause. And the, um, the list of people that are playing these things, like obviously that you have the pros, but then like Rondé Barber, Jerome Bettis, Roger Clemens, uh, Marshall Falk, Patrick Dempsey, Marty fish, Doug Flutie, uh, Blair O'Neill, Sterling Sharp, like Taylor Twelman, Brian Erlacher, like I should not be invited to this, but <laughs> I think I like cover their uh, like female quota. Like I can get I can get a couple of Bachelor Nation ladies to come into the into the gates, and they're like, "All right, good, we got some ladies in these tournaments." But you got Patrick Dempsey though, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I'm sure he also is is doing some good, some the Lord's work for the ladies out there. <laughs> yeah. It's all, so, always so funny. And like, I, we were at the night before the uh, Oscars dinner and we were hanging out with um, Kevin from the office, Brian Bumgarner, right. who's he, mm-hmm. I play with him. Ev- all these things we always play with him. And he's so funny. Like he's always got side money games going and he's like the life of the party. And, it is really fun. It's a it's a really good opportunity for people who are fans of these people to like actually get up and close with them because you know you're if you walk along with somebody, eventually they're gonna be like, "You've been watching me for three holes. What's up? What's your name?" You know, it's a right. it's a cool opportunity for for fans of like these athletes to like actually take pictures and talk with them. So it's a cool thing, right? And profits from the ticket sales are going to a good cause too. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we will definitely. We will put some links out to um, both of those in the the notes of the podcast episode on Spotify and Apple and on YouTube. And um, thank you again so much for being here. Um, people can follow you on social media at Wells Adams. Yes. Yep. All it's platforms. At- um, yep. And um, we will see all of you again soon. Um, stay tuned for more from me at Nikki Dunnigan. And as always, we are posting updates on at Golf Unfiltered, and we will see you again next time.